The team at ITN Productions are pleased to announce that we're partnering again with the Royal Society of Medicine to create a programme for the medical community 21st century healthcare. And to tell us more, I'm joined by the president of the society, Professor Sir Simon Wesley. You've become president at a time of, of real changes, haven't you, in the way that healthcare is provided? Well, First of all, I think every person who's ever taken on this job would always say the same thing. And the whole history of healthcare is it's always in a time of dramatic change. Uh, and that's the nature of the beast. And, and thank God, it would be terrible if we all stayed the same. On the other hand, it's also true that some of the challenges we're facing at the moment are unprecedented, both positive and negative. So what would you highlight then as your key challenge, if it's possible? <laughs> I don't think there's any, ever any one key challenge, but I think some of them are very obvious, the key challenges, the pace of technology and change and what we can do versus what we can afford and what we should do. And how do we, ch how do we balance all those? Because what we can do isn't always what we should do and what we should do isn't always what we can afford. And so I guess that's all down to resources. It's partly down to resources, but it's much more than that as well. It's about you know, issues such as end of life care, um, the difference between just survival and quality of life, and of course, mental versus physical health and the balance between the two. So these are all difficult decisions that we need to take. And the Royal Society of Medicine is one of those places where we can discuss across the profession and with the public um, the, the, the decisions and challenges that we're going to face. You mentioned mental health there, of course, that being your specialty. We know that one in four of us at some point will face some mental health challenge. What kind of resources are available and is enough attention paid to it? I obviously am partisan on this issue and it's a sign of the times that in the hundreds of years of our history I'm the first psychiatrist who's actually been in this, in this role, which is itself a sign of the times that mental health is increasing in its recognition and importance. But the fact that one in four of us do face these problems also tells us that many of these problems aren't going to be solved by professionals like me and we, this is another area of considerable uh, debate that we have to settle who are you looking to to help with that? Well, here's an area in which, I mean, you know, having someone of my age talk about social media is always going to end badly, and <laughs> I accept that. Um, but on the other hand, there are amazing possibilities in increasing the reach of your social networks and, uh, and bringing in what people do instinctively when times are hard. They talk to people who know them at the time and the place of their choosing, and we know that they don't want to talk to professionals unless and until they actually get specific and sometimes quite severe mental health problems. Now, technologies there can massively increase how we do that, and they can also ensure that people like me are only used to those who really need it, whereas the general way in which we deal with stress is available to more and more people. So that's clearly an issue for technologies, um, of which, as I say, I'm the last person in the world to talk about. I'm sure you've got people who can advise and help you. So. Yes. <laughs> well, here at ITN Productions, we're obviously very much looking forward to continuing our relationship with the Royal Society of Medicine. But what specifically are you hoping to achieve from this relationship? Um, my, my last job, I was president of the Royal College of Psychiatrists, and obviously we speak for psychiatry, but that's only one bit of medicine. And at the Royal Society of Medicine, we hopefully speak for the whole of the profession, everything from cardiac surgeons, general practitioners, public health psychiatry, the lot. And so that gives us, I think, a, a unique reach. And the second thing is, we are the kind of place where we can bring together people of all sorts of different backgrounds, etc., to have the kind of discussions, debates. Um, earlier this year, we had uh, Professor Stephen Hawking um, in the building, as they say, and you don't get more international and famous than he is. And it was very sparky, no question about it. But that's exactly the kind of sparks we want to generate. And that's the kind of debates we want to kick off because we're going to have to solve some of these issues. And the last thing I want to achieve is that you know, despite everything, despite the pressures we're under, despite the criticisms doctors face these days and the, fact, the problems of regulation, all those things, it's to convey the enthusiasm that most people still have for this chosen profession. It is an amazing thing to do. It's an amazing thing to do in a, to be in a profession where we are still, along with nurses, the most trusted profession in the country, despite everything. Now that's a privilege. That's an amazing privilege and we want to get people to realize it, it, it's still the job to do. It's the place to be. And it's been a privilege talking to you. So Simon Wesley, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.